Gary Okino here. I'm extremely excited for you to begin your journey towards shooting lower golf scores. Please know that if you want to shoot lower golf scores, you must follow the unique mindset and processes that I show you. This is called Mind Technique Synergy, which is your true secret to shooting lower scores consistently. Mind Technique Synergy is why students in my last Golf Lesson Ever coaching program have made it the number one golf coaching program for amateurs in America. Only you can make the choice. I'm super pumped for you to get started, so have fun and thank you. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the kickoff of the 2014 Play Golf Like the Pros U.S. Tour. I'm Bruce Corris of Market Domination and uh, we appreciate you being here and you guys are going to have a ball this afternoon. Golf, as you know, is more than just a game. It is a passion and that's evidenced by the fact that you guys are out here on a bitter cold Buffalo Sunday afternoon in January. Uh, Gary's passion is making you guys better golfers and that is something that he has been doing for years. He's been doing it as the director of instruction at the Orchard Park Country Club. He has done it through his best-selling book and he has done it through his coaching program which by the way based on results is the number one coaching program in America for golf. Last year his students knocked a whopping 30 percent off of their handicap. Today you're going to get the chance to take part in that program. You're going to see and take part in some of the latest techniques you're going to win some prizes, and you're going to have a lot of fun. So, to use one of Gary's favorite phrases, I am so pumped to introduce Gary Aquino. Thank you, everybody. I don't know what there is left to say because he used my pump line. So, <laughs> I'll be excited to say hello to you all. Thank you for coming. And I can promise you one thing, it's uh, about, what, 7 to 15 degrees outside. Well, uh, as weird as it is to have a golf event when it's 7 or 10 or 15 degrees, we'll make the information more natural and normal for you than the weather. So thank you for coming. Um, there's a couple things we're going to do today. We're going to have uh, some demonstrations of techniques. We're going to have a lot of information for you on how to swing and do your short game and uh, how to bring your game to the golf course. But really, this is about you. So we're going to have live lessons. We're going to have implementation of the concepts. And I encourage a lot of um, questions and uh, interaction. So this is going to be something that I'd like you to all you know, have fun with and, uh, and enjoy. So a uh, question for you all. What is the biggest thing that you think hurts your golf game? I'm playing off. You don't play enough. <laughs> Likewise. What else? How about this? What's a goal for your golf game or something that you want? Consistency. consistency. We will get you consistency today if you follow the concepts. Anything else? Anybody want to hit the ball like 300 yards? 400. 400. Excellent. Well, it's going to be important to understand that for everything we talk about today, there's going to be information that are preferences, and there's going to be information that are laws. So we have to be able to differentiate between the two. So again, there are laws, and there are preferences. I did a not-so-quick study one day on YouTube. I went through a thousand videos, so more like over the course of a week it took me. A thousand videos. 992 out of those 1,000 preferences. So that means is they are hit or miss, random tips that may or may not work for you, which often leads to the golfer's frustration. What we will try to do today mostly are do things that are based on law, scientific law and process that works universally. Now, after you have the laws figured out, which we'll get into in a moment, you can then adapt them based on preferences. So a lot of the questions that we're going to hear today and be asked are going to be preference. I'm going to focus on what's the most important. So the reason why we've had so much success in the coaching program are really twofold. One is we focus on what matters. And these laws are actually the real fundamentals. So most people are conditioned to think that your grip and the way you stand and your posture are the laws. They're actually preferences. We're going to get into what those real laws are in a minute. So with that being said, 
let's start with what I think is the most important thing for you to know in golf. If you don't have this concept, you probably are not going to get any better as far as your technique goes. And that is the concept of centeredness. So, centeredness is your ability when you chip the ball, pitch the ball, swing the golf club, to stay centered. In other words, your head, if this is the ball, your head and your spine stays in a fixed position and it needs to turn around a steady spot. Almost every golfer I first work with goes like this <laughs> because they think they need to shift their weight back in their backswing. This isn't baseball, this isn't tennis, you don't have to load up to play it through. We need to learn how to make a centered pivot or a centered swing. So we'll see over here, we're going to refer to this every so often today. This is our gravestone for our full swing death moves. And you'll see number two on there is weight shift in your backswing. If you think you need to consciously shift your weight, you are going to have a higher handicap than if you don't. So by weight shift, we're defining a weight shift as this. Kind of what I just showed. Thinking that you need to take and load all your weight up back here. What looks like it might be a problem if I do that? If my golf ball is right here, and I'm loading up my weight back here. What's going to be the problem with that? I'm most likely going to hit behind the golf ball because I've changed the center point of me, head and spine, I've changed the center point from being located in a fixed position where I can now meet the ball each time to a variable position where I'm now going to hit behind the ball, my weight's on my back foot. What else can I do from there? The old top shot. Not bad, I've been practicing that. So you can top the golf ball, or pretty much do anything else. You can hit it left and right as well. So for those of you who have a golf game, it feels like it's just a golf, it's roulette disguised as golf, it's a good place to start would be centeredness. So who wants to come up and be the first volunteer to be shown some drills for centeredness so that uh, we can get everybody seeing how to do some of these things? Yeah. Now, Ernie, when you go to hit a golf ball, what do you think about? What's on your mind or what kind of thoughts do you have? Normally, just to get it to where I want it to go. But Good. the problem is, is you think about a lot of other stuff. Like what? Oh, you know, the back swing, making sure this is straight, coming down, making sure you're turning, <laughs> make sure you're doing this, <laughs> coming through there, coming out where I'm having for lunch. You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, well said. So, anybody, everybody find that they, they sound like Ernie? Yep. When we, when we play badly especially? So what's, uh, what's going to be Ernie's chief challenge? Too much information in your head, right? Right. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this concept of centeredness for you, and we're going to also add in what we call rule number one. Rule number one is the thinking zone and the playing zone. It's important to understand that there's a place for Ernie to go through his 17 thoughts plus lunch. <laughs> Ernie had about a, at least a half dozen. So his half dozen thoughts plus lunch. There's a place to be thinking about that. And there's a place to be thinking about what you initially said. Basically where you're trying to hit the golf ball. Right? Mm -hmm. So what Ernie, what you like, would like to see you do is let's make a little line here for you. Make a little demarcation for you. Okay? Okay. This is going to be your thinking zone away from the ball. So this will be our ball right here. Ernie is going to do all his thinking over here. So if he has swing thoughts, which you clearly did, we'll try to pare that down to maybe one. I'll give you one in a minute. All these swing thoughts over here. Or go back there. Or go somewhere else, not over the ball. Anybody ever seen an athlete like a pitcher or a tennis player or a basketball player or a golfer playing well with a million thoughts over the ball? Should I get a card that says, no, 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 no. okay, no, you don't see that. When, how about when you played your best round of golf? What were you thinking about? Nothing. Nothing, very simple. So now here's the challenge. You all are going to get information today. Ernie's about to get some information in a moment. 
How do you implement that information so you're able to be athletic, free, and relaxed? As opposed to implementing that information sounding like you were like one of those puppets being all pulled around, right? You don't want that. So what Ernie's going to do is we're going to give you a little swing drill. I'm going to give you a drill to help with centeredness, since that's the concept we're illustrating. Okay. I'm going to have Ernie do it in a moment. Is Ernie's going to take his back foot, in this case it's Ernie's left foot, in the case of the right-handed golfer to be the right foot, we're going to take that right foot and just pick it up. So you should feel like you could put a brick underneath your shoe, about that much. You get really good calves from this, even though I'm not a very good example of that, but uh, Ernie will have a nice developed left calf there. So anyway, you get a good, good old calf muscle putting your heel up, and you practice swinging a few times so that you can't drift or sway all your weight over. So between doing that and keeping your head steady, you're now going to have a head start on centeredness. All right, so let's go ahead, Ernie, and have you make a practice swing where you do that. You feel your head stay steady and you feel your foot stay up. Just make sure you're on the mat, please. All right, so Ernie's doing this in his thinking zone. He is allowing himself to think. Beautiful, now we have one problem. We only have right-handed clubs, so you want to give it a whack? Sure. Give it a little only foam. <laughs> sure there isn't one big golf ball in there? I know, I'm like... All right! <laughs> Not bad. Four. <laughs> okay, very well done. Thank you. Let's have a round of applause for Ernie. Hold on, Ernie, hold on, hold on. Ernie, this is for you. This is for a download from one of our websites, SamuraiGolfSwing.com. There's three different products on there. There is Get Golf Consistency or Swing Consistency, Fix Your Hook, and Fix Your Slice. So you're welcome to go on there and grab one. Directions are inside for you. Thank you. Thank you. Not bad, too. You did that left-handed. Or with the right-handed club. Further illustrating that if you're centered, you can hit the ball no matter which way you want to play. So, thank, you, thank you. And I swear, I just met Ernie, so that was pretty cool. Um, now, it's one of the keys to the golf swing is centeredness. So a couple ways you can achieve centeredness. We showed one method is to be able to put your foot up, your right foot up like that. That's a good little drill for you. Another one is very simply to take a dowel rod like this or, um, or another club and lay it down and just practice swinging so that your head stays steady, to this case, the stick. So you feel like you're not moving right or left. You could also take a marker and just put it right down a mirror if you want in your house. Just a joke. <laughs> Don't want to do that. But uh, any way to get you to stay centered. So it's important to understand that the golf swing works around a centered point. We're not consciously trying to move laterally in our backswing. Any questions with that? Okay, next topic for the full swing. Uh, what I believe is a must have. Again, another law. Not focusing on preferences, we're focusing on laws. When you go to hit a golf ball, many of you think that you lift up, right? How many times have you heard, I picked my head up, or keep your head down, or something like that? Yep. How many? All the time. All the time. Anybody tired of hearing that? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Well, the good news is, you don't have to hear that any longer. Uh, David Duvall, Annika Sorenstam, <laughs> It's a ton of golfers, actually. Joe Durant, if you ever heard that name, he led the PGA Tour in greens and regulation for a bunch of years. They all actually swing the golf club where they get the club to the top, they actually turn their head first and swing. They're not even looking at the golf ball when they hit it. Those are some pretty big names. David Duvall, Annika Sorensen, Joe Durant, etc. You do not need to get stuck and obsessed with keeping your head down. I'm not advocating lifting it up either because that's kind of hard to learn to do but you don't need to be stuck and worried about keeping it down. Keeping it down is extremely detrimental to your swing if you keep your head down too long. So getting back to our gravestone, a death move of the golf swing for you is keeping your head down too long. Let's show you what we mean by this and make sure we differentiate and do this the right way. Okay. A golfer who's trying to keep his or her head down too long looks like this typically. What do you see in watching that that looks like it might be somewhat problematic? Stifling your swing. Stifling your swing. 
uh, putting that another way, you're not using your maximum power, right? Could you imagine if you kicked a soccer ball or how about the Super Bowl this upcoming weekend? One of those field goal kicker lines up, field goal kickers lines up to win the game at the end and he goes like this. He'd fall backwards right on his tail again. Okay? There's no power, there's no thrust, so you lose power. What else happens? Let's show you this again. Anybody a chiropractor or physical therapist or anything like that, tell me what this looks like. It's all arms. What's going to happen to my body? Anybody? Back's not going to feel all that hot. My back's going to hurt. I can hurt my cervical spine. I can hurt my lumbar spine. I've been working on that all night. It's actually just top and bottom. So <laughs> you can hurt yourself. Not good. So anybody having you know lumbar pains or cervical pains after they play golf, you better look at your golf swing. Get some help. You can hurt yourself. Okay. What else do you think might happen to your golf swing if you're all arms like you said? You have no finish, you have no control, you're going to hit the ball left and right. A lot of times you actually back up out of the ball, you top it, and then somebody tells you what after that happens a bunch of times. What do they tell you? you keep your head down. <laughs> yeah. And then you wind up standing like this. <laughs> and it's not that easy to play. So you run into problems. It doesn't work. So the best way to say it, we're going to change the, the verbiage a little bit for you, make this a little easier, is keep your eye on the ball and follow it. That allows you to keep yourself in position that you can sense and feel the strike, but then follow it. That allows you to also get your weight to the finished position, allows you to get into a nice athletic position, much more spine friendly. In the golf swing, we'll talk about this a little later, but your spine actually extends a little bit and that helps it extend as opposed to putting compression on it. So that's an important piece. So keep your eye on the ball and follow it. Now, how can you still hit bad shots if you just have those two things? What might be something else? There's something that people mistake is really happening that we can see on the video or on the, in, in the cameras that you probably don't know. So if you do, well, this will be review. But instead of saying keep your head down, it's going to be keep your eye on the ball and follow it. But really the culprit when you top the ball and hit it poorly is that you have breakdowns in your lead wrist. So by lead wrist, in my case, it's my left wrist. The wrist that's coming into the ball first. It should be extended at impact. So this is point number two that you really need to know. Point number one is centeredness. Point number two that you really need to know is how to extend or get your wrist flat at impact. There's drills for this we'll go over in a minute, but that is a key. All really, really good ball strikers or, or hitters of the golf ball look like this, <coughs> excuse me, where they are lined up from the shoulder to the club head is lined up in one straight line. All poor ball strikers look like this, where they're scooping. <coughs> Excuse me. Can't imagine how I got a cough in Buffalo in uh, <laughs> the past few weeks. I mean, if anybody knows, let me know. So, anyhow, that's the key to another key to great ball striking is learning how to impact the ball this way and line up. Any questions on that? Anyone want to know how to do it? <laughs> Who's going to be the next volunteer? Okay, now, Brendan, what we're going to do is we're going to show you a couple drills. By the way, how do you play golf? How are you? Uh, not bad. No? Not great, not bad, though. No, not good. bad at all. If he wasn't on stage, he'd probably say, you know what, I'm pretty good, but he's just covering himself. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a handicap? Uh, probably about like, I'm right around like a not bad, about a 90 golfer, very good. Okay, so in order to get yourself to impact the wall better, you need to know how to line up an impact. So let's do this drill here. We're going to call this a freeze drill. Here's what I'd like you to do. We have the old impact bag here to help you. Here's what I'd like you to do. <clears throat> Make a couple swings. You can stand right up there. And Stop at impact and freeze right into that bag. So let's hit that. Let's actually so hit that bag. Just hit the bag. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, now so just freeze right there. Brendan is beautifully lined up from his shoulder all the way through the club is a straight line. He has not done, for example, 
let's take this together, please. He has not done, for example, put your other hand on. Yeah. I know it's different. Yeah. Okay. This, where he's, you can hold it. Uh. <laughs> okay. We'll put three hands on the club. Uh. Okay. <laughs> so he has not done this, for example, where he's tried to scoop or help the ball. When we get into the short game technique in a little while, this will also apply. He's not tried to lift it with his hands. He's not backed out of it with his body. So that, now go ahead and hit this bag as far as you can. So how can you move, I know. How can you move a bag that has about a pound and a half of towels in there? Probably wet, disgusting ones by now. But how do you, how do you hit a bag that far without doing it the right way? Okay. That's power right there. So if you want to have some more power in your golf swing, you need to learn how to stay centered, and you need to learn how to line yourself up. So that drill, go ahead and do that drill one more time without the bag. You don't need it. Yep. So just freeze that? Just do the freeze drill. Practicing your impact, go ahead, every, every day. Let's try to freeze it down here, Mark. Yeah. It's a little different. <laughs> Practicing freezing like that all the time is going to help you. Now what muscles in your body do you feel are working? Right here. Some core right muscles are working. Yeah. What else? Legs? Probably legs, yeah. Yeah. All our so legs core. and core. And he's even going to do that one more time. Feel your arm muscles working. So he's actually resisting. He's using his arm muscles and his hands to resist this from happening. That flicking or throwing. Right? So for those of you trying to roll your wrists over, there's a better way we'll get to as we go. But that's not the right answer either. So the two things we need to know so far are centeredness and we need to know how to line up at impact. Nope. Great. Thank you. you. Oh, I have a little gift for you. If it's not the kind you play, well, too bad. I don't have a golf shop here, so <laughs> enjoy them. So again, topic number, point number one that you need to understand is centeredness. Number two is how to line up. Now the good news is, these two pieces are universal concepts that apply all the way up. They apply to chipping, they apply to pitching, they apply to the full swing. We'll actually be reviewing them a little bit later. If you can't do these two concepts, your entire game will suffer. I guess maybe putting you could handle, but your entire game will suffer. They are the real fundamentals of the golf swing. Too often, we're too focused on, you know, how do I stand, what do I do here, you know. Those are the preferences. Even the grip is a preference. It's the guy who grips it cross-handed. He has his, he's a right-handed golfer and his left hand is low. It's pretty good. His name is Josh Broadaway. Anyway, so you have different grips, different stances, different postures, all these preferences. You need to have the right fundamentals. And that's why you see golfers sometimes who idiosyncratically, they, their swings look terrible. They're idiosyncratic. They, they look like they're going to almost hurt themselves, but they play well because they're centered and they know how to have good impact. And from a scientific or a technique perspective, you need those couple things. Any questions on that stuff? So there's a couple drills for you to do. Did I see a hand up? No, okay. There's a couple drills you need to do. Just spend a little time each day focusing on staying centered and spend a little time each day focusing on lining up. You can practice clipping away at the turf. By the way, when I do this, I get my hands and everything lined up like this. Where does my weight go? It goes forward. So for those of you that are really, really concerned about shifting your weight and all this other stuff, a simple way to do it is learn how to line up. You can get rid of more swing problems with those two concepts than, uh, than you really, really know. Again, questions? Okay, um, next order of business is, ah, another killer of golf swings that prevents you from doing what we're talking about. I have a few students in the audience right now and they do this, so I'll try to keep my eyes off of you. <laughs> <laughs> Getting the club head behind you in your backswing. This is a death move of the golf swing, and um, it'll really hurt you for being able to do the other two. So getting the club head behind you. 
This is what that means. When you go to swing the golf club, you have you have a corridor or an alleyway. So this will be where the ball is. Put this here. Like that. That's going to be defined as your target line. I'm trying to hit the ball down that line. So that's where my club will go. And then you have another line that basically goes on your heels. When you take the club away, you need to have that golf club in that corridor right there. Everybody see how the club head is in between those lines in a halfway back position? People that struggle do this. That club head is now behind my body. It's over there somewhere. And now, what happens from there? Who can tell me what's going to happen if I try to hit that ball? A little louder, please. What's that? Your, oh yeah, your arms are just going to have to flail at the ball because if you, you can't get them, you're, they're basically your arms are stuck here, your body's in the way. So that's when you start seeing swings like this and, and, and tough stuff really, again, for the back and everything else. So in order to keep yourself safe and get to be a better ball striker, chipping, pitching, hitting the golf ball, you do not want to get that club behind you. So we need to show you exactly how to make the right takeaway now to help you. All right, let's call somebody up again. This is much more fun to do when people are up here as opposed to me talking. So who wants to come up here and be the model for the proper takeaway? Name? Griffin. Griffin, how are you? Good. Gary Okino. Nice to, nice to meet you officially. Very cool. What's your handicap? Like a six. A six. These guys, my goodness. What do you need me for? <laughs> anyway. All right. So Griffin, we'll put your golf ball right here. Now again, very important concept. We're about to give Griffin a drill to do for his golf swing. He needs to be able to implement or use that where? In the thinking zone or in the playing zone? In the thinking zone. You need to think away from the ball. Again, could you imagine you know, uh, a pitcher standing up there in the World Series and going, uh, I'm going to, okay, it's a 3-2 pitch here in the seventh inning. I'm going to think about how I'm hinging my wrist and moving my elbow and not spin. It doesn't work that way. So you think away from the ball, you play over. All right, so we're going to define those zones for you there. Sound good? Sure. All right. So let's take that club in your hand. There's a couple drills you can do that will help you with your takeaway. The first one is, is to take the club and shorten it up, grab it on basically on the steel, and you put it right in your navel. All right? He doesn't even have a gun. Look at him. So you put it right in your navel, and you grab it normal. And you just practice taking the club away slowly by turning or pivoting your body. And you'll notice, you only want to take it to about there, that's perfect. You'll notice, where does that club stay? It stays in where you first go, put your club down. Or, I'm sorry, a little higher. Yeah. It stays where, the, where you started, there's his first line and here's his second, go ahead. It stays in the corridor. He also has been able to use some body turn and get the proper body pivot started. So if Griffin can, go ahead again. If Griffin can do that with a steady head, he has the club set going back on a good path, he has himself centered, and now he can just, you know, send it. So this is an excellent drill for you. One more time. Very good. And really important to the golf swing. So now, if we were doing this on the golf course, Griffin would want to Go ahead and stay in your thinking zone for a second. He'd want to put the club in his, in his navel or belly button first. Yep. And do the drill once or twice. Beautiful. Then he'd step into the playing zone by grabbing it normally, and he'd hit within, say, two, three, four seconds. We're not going to hit this time, just so we, we're kind of pointed right now. Poor gentleman in the front row. I already <laughs> took one. <laughs> the, I, I forgot. We usually have play golf like the pros bulletproof vests, but I forgot, I forgot them, so it's too much to lug in. So anyway, that's what Griffin can do as a drill. Another thing you can do very simply, go ahead and do your, uh, your practice swing again, except not with the club in your belly button, just normal. He can practice just putting his left arm and pinning it to his chest. So again, feeling like the inner left arm the upper arm is pinned to the chest. And if you just make a swing where you keep it 
pinned, go ahead, he's going to have a great takeaway. Excellent. Now, no, uh, let's keep doing this one more time. Now, notice for you, swing junkies, a lot of people tell you that the toe of the club, can I have you turn that way a little bit, just so everybody can see, uh, other that way. Thank you. Okay, perfect. The toe of the club at this little checkpoint here, can you see how it's on, go ahead into a posture like you were. Yep. See how the toe of the club is matching his angle of his back? Okay. Most people think the toe needs to be pointed straight up to the sky. Not right. That action by trying to point the toe up to the sky is going to lead to a rightward starting ball almost all day. That's an open club fix. So for those of you who are trying to get the toe of the club pointing up, not good. Because you bring that back to impact, we have a ball that's going to start to the right all day long. Okay, so all you want to do is keep your left arm pinned on your chest, turn your body, and that's your takeaway. He has his left arm pinned, the club would be in that corridor we were talking about even though we turned a little bit. And the toe of the club is on, or the top line of the club, maybe easier for you to see, is on the same angle as his spine. It's not pointing straight up to the sky. All right? Any questions on that? Are we doing that well? <laughs> okay. Anybody ever go to the gym? Yep. I know, it looks like I just was there, I know. <laughs> That's what all of your first thought was. Okay, let's say I went to the gym, or... I didn't do it. <laughs> I went to the gym, or you went to the gym, and did 10 or 15 curls, bicep curls. What is your arm going to feel like for the next, arms going to feel like for the next 20, 30 seconds? Tight. They're going to feel tight. They're going to feel pumped, correct? Okay. Uh, stimulated, if you will. Okay. You basically have awakened all the uh, motor pathways and muscle fibers and everything else, all these fancy terms that probably you know better than me. But you've sort of stimulated the area to work. This is the secret to the golf swing. If you get information and you know how to rehearse it away from the ball, it's going to be stimulated or work two, three, four seconds later. So for example, if I do this takeaway move, and I come in and just swing, what am I more apt to do? The move that I practiced or not? This is why I called it rule number one. Because what do most people do? They have no preparation for the shot, they walk in, and they start thinking about lots of stuff. You are an excellent example on that. All these 10 or 20 thoughts. Anybody ever seen that cartoon where there's thoughts all over, the, exploding out of the guy's head? So that's what most people do. Then they go hit their ball, it doesn't go exactly where they want, and they kind of get like, you know, dejected and then try to repeat the same old thing. What happens during most lessons? Not most, but like, sorry to say, 97, 98% of them? Ball after ball. Ball after ball after ball with thoughts. And so even though you may be getting the right information for you at that time, if you don't know how to put it into the thinking zone and playing zone, do you improve? <coughs> you get worse. Because what ends up happening is you've lost all sense of any natural ability you have. Now you're not even focused at all on where you're going. And all you're doing is up here thinking about a million things. Try playing sports with six or eight things in your head, especially golf, if you haven't already. It's hard and it doesn't work. So then we get that lesson. Uh, it wouldn't be from me, it would be from someone else because I'll get you in the thinking zone and playing zone. And you're going to end up overthinking. You're going to end up uh, tight. Your mind's going to get tight and then the game becomes less fun. Then you think you need to go practice, right? So you go over to the range and you, try, you think hitting that 100 or 200 is going to work. Does that 100 or 200 usually work? The answer is it works better than you play. So you think you're getting it. Then what happens? You go out to the course, what happens? Start thinking again. And what happens to your results? Bad again. Exactly. Not good. Because again, you don't know the thinking zone and the playing zone. So even though you practiced, all you did was get in a rhythm. 
you just got in a rhythm for that period of time. So now you've played golf, or uh, you've taken a lesson, you played golf, you go to practice, you go to play golf again, it's now probably been a week or two, you're not getting any better, you don't know how to practice each day, and then you run into this downward spiral. Even though your instructor was nice, and you probably get along with him or her, you know, you might be able to say nice things about him if you saw him out at a restaurant, your golf game is not improving. The American public improves 0% each year. Even those taking lessons, zero. We have 30% in our camp because of things like the thinking zone and playing zone. These are the things you need to understand are rule number one, or as rule number one. You can have all the technical information you want. You can have centeredness. You can have how to line up correctly. You can have how to take the club away correctly. But if you don't have the understanding of the thinking zone and playing zone to go with it, you will not do well. Um, I'm not saying that you can't, but all in all, the results show it's not as good. Any questions on that? <laughs> Gary. Dan. Hi, Dan. How are you? Good, thanks. Dan, uh, do you slice all your clubs? you just slice your driver? How much do you slice the ball? Um, I think when I'm over swinging, I primarily do my driver the most. Okay. Which is very normal. Typically, a slice will get worse as it goes up due to more swing speed, due to a longer club shaft, due to less loft on the club. Typically. You don't always see that, but typically. Okay. So, Dan, it's important to understand this is your golf ball. I know you can hit this. So, <laughs> you're doing a very easy job today. You need a big bag. It's important to understand. that you slice the ball, and so does everybody else who slices the ball, because this bit of information is a? A what? A law. A law. This is a law. It will not change until the physicists change it. So if you know of anyone who knows something different, let me know. This is a law. You slice the ball because your swing path, swing path is basically the coming into the ball, how you swing down, you can swing on a path that comes across the ball, or you can swing on a path that comes from the inside and goes out to the, out to the right more. Okay, so we're a right-handed golfer. Your swing path comes what's called outside in. It comes from away from you, across. Your swing path is this way. Hold that, please. That action of swinging that way toward the ball. So again, our target is here. Let's make this real easy. This is like my remedial science class for, hey, no. <laughs> See, I must have swung across that ball. So when the swing comes this way too much across the ball, it puts a spin on it that goes to the right. Even that one did. Oh, the stage perfect. Look at that. <laughs> so it spins the ball to the right. When the swing comes this way, the ball gets too much of a clockwise spin, and it spins out to the right. You do not slice the ball because your club face is open. Almost everybody, it, it can be because your club face is open in addition to the path. Now you have a slice on top of a slice. Okay? But it is not because the club face is open. Your club face, let's just do this for a minute. Stubborn. Your club face, let's go ahead and stand up here for a moment. You can be our model here. Your club face is the starting line. So if your club is pointed left when you hit the ball, the ball is starting left. If your club is pointed right when you hit the ball, your ball is starting right. Your club face is only the starting line. So your, your swing direction is going to be the curve on it. So most slicers, believe it or not, actually have a club pointed to the left. Go ahead and hold that up. But their swing path is so much more to the left that it still slices. The club is open to the path of the swing. Every single person who draws the golf ball, a draw is the shot we're going to learn to hit here. Every single person who draws the golf ball actually has a slightly open club face at impact but they also have a swing path 
that is more to the right than the club face. So let's say, for example, their club is two degrees open or rightward pointing at impact. This would be zero. His club's two degrees open or rightward pointing. The path of the swing is actually more than two degrees out to the right. So if you want to fix your slice at the snap of your fingers, you need to learn how to swing your golf club more on a path that's more that way. So go ahead and do that a little bit for me, just whether it's in the air or there. Yep. Yeah, that's how you do it. So keep doing that a few times. So this would be straight, good. You want to feel like you're swinging out to right field. Excellent. Now, also, for those of you who want to make this even easier, so our, our path needs to be this way, correct? What part of the ball, and if any of you are, uh, happens to be a pool player, you'll understand this. What part of the ball should, should you be hitting? There's Dan, right? Mm -hmm. Dan, what part of the ball should you be hitting? Should you be hitting the inside left corner going that way? Or should you be trying to drive a nail into that part of the ball? Correct. Yeah. Drive a nail into the outside right corner of the golf ball. What's going to happen? It's going to spin to the left. Just like in pool. You hit down on the pool ball, it spins back. You hit on the right side, it spins left. You hit on the left side, it spins right. So a really simple way to fix your slice, forget about all the other stuff, is just learn to make small swings. You can hit that ball now if you want. Okay? <laughs> just don't hit it real hard. Make a small swing. Make small swings, and all we're trying to do is this, Dan, is we're trying to get your swing path to come in that way. That's it. Yep, there you go. So go ahead and hit one just like that. Heads up in front there. <laughs> Sorry, Gary. <laughs> he brought him. You wanted to sit there. I'm going to try to book future tournaments. Anyway, we won't do that again. Perfect. That's straight. See, we know that. That is how you're going to fix your slice. You are going to get a swing path that is more what we call in to out, and we are going to get hitting more on the outside of the golf ball. There's drills for that we'll show you as we go. Any questions? Oh, that's great. Very simple, right? <laughs> Any questions from the audience? Now I'm going to ask this properly. Don't take offense, but is anybody out there a hooker? <laughs> <laughs> Do you just want to be or are you? <laughs> Come on now. You, yeah. A hooker of the golf ball is one, if you're a right-handed golfer, your ball starts out in a given direction and it spins to the left a lot. Hi, Gary. Alec. Alec, how are you? Nice Mark. to meet you. Me Just all right? Where else would you rather be? Florida. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can come to a future date in Florida then. We're in good shape. So, Alec, how much, uh, what, what kind of golf do you play? Decent for my age. Decent for your age? I'm a nine. Nine handicap, very well done. Now, when your game gets out of control, do you hit the ball too far to the left and it starts going left? Yeah. Okay, so it spins left though. It's not just starting yeah. left, it spins left. Because remember, a, a hooker of the golf ball is someone who's spinning the ball or curving it left. It could start straight, it could start right, it could start left, but it's spinning left out of control. Then it hits the ground and it runs, runs like a rabbit and goes out of bounds or into a hazard, right? Yeah, they're tough to control. Most tour professionals like to actually fade the ball a little bit as opposed because that hook's tough to control. I said most, not all. So Alec, what do you think you need to do based on what you learn with this big huge golf ball we have here? Let's see if we can anchor it in. The runaway ball. What do you think you need to do in order to get your hook less? Instead of going that way, swing that way. There you go. So let's take, uh, can you, that's good. Take this club. So what Alec wants to do, in other words, he's hitting the ball, starting out straight or whatever, and it's curving hard to the left. That is because his swing is too much out to the right. And if I haven't made this clear enough, the ball spins opposite of the direction you swing. So if you swing out to the right, that ball is spinning left. If you swing to the left with your downswing, that ball is spinning to the right. So Alec wants to do exactly the opposite of what Dan just did. 
Dan wants to swing more out to the right. If we told Alec to do that, he'd hook it more. So Alec wants to feel like he is swinging more this way, that way. So let's take some practice swings. We're only talking about downswing here. We're not too worried about the backswing. Just talk, take some practice swings where you feel like you are taking the handle of the golf club, so your, your hands in the handle, and you are swinging it more, go ahead and turn your body left now. Good, more that way, excellent. That does two things. One is it makes the ball spin differently. It also is gonna help him too in case his club face is a little closed. It's gonna help it stay more open, all right? So make some practice swings where you try to get the handle to pass by your left pocket. Good, keep doing that. Good. Now, Alec has a little move here. Let's do this together. He's doing a little bit of this. See how his hands are a little active? That could also contribute a little bit to some hooking. So we're just gonna do this, where we're gonna hold this end of the club. Go ahead and swing left now. Good, and practice that. See how, for those of you that hook the golf ball, you wanna feel like your hands or the handle of the club stays to the left of the club head. So it's like there's two circles here. We're just gonna move this guy for one second. Put her back over here. Like there's two circles here. There's an inner circle for his hands, and there's an outer circle for the club. I believe back to my geometry days, those are called concentric circles. So anyway, we want the inner circle, which is the hands, we want them to feel like it, that staying, the hands are staying left of the club head. It's a great feel for you to stop hooking the ball. All right? Because a hooker of the golf ball typically is gonna get in here too much and then do both, okay? where the hands get out of the way. Make sense? All right, so let's do one. Now be gentle, we're gonna hit it out that way so we don't have any issues now. Poor Gary's taking a beating in the front row there. <laughs> Get him a gift, right? <laughs> but here for your attorney, aren't I, Gary? <laughs> anyway, so let's make at least a reasonably gentle swing. We don't want to hurt the camera either. But work on getting your hands going left. So let's do thinking zone first. Practice it. Excellent. Again. Now get in there and just make it happen. There you go. Look at that ball spinning to the right. Good man. That's how you do it. So it's very simple, everybody. If you want to make the ball spin differently, you actually swing in the direction you're trying to avoid. It's a game of opposites. If you're trying to slice less, swing out to the right more. If you're trying to hook less, swing to the left more. Thank you. Give a round of applause for Alec.